So in this video, I show Big D how to use the T8 with the Japanese stone because his brand new chisel set didn't need to be ground down. It just needed to get it to a mirror finish. Hey, Big D, what do you get there? I went out and bought myself a chisel set. Wow, let's take a look. <laughs> Come over here. Let me look at these. All right. Okay, so we're going to open it up. Oh, cool. Looks like some uh, decent German steel. And I like this. They're in metric. So, why'd you bring them by? So we can uh, lap the back and get that first sharp on it. Okay, I'm glad you said that. A lot of the times when you buy a brand new set of chisels, they give it a quick machine honing or a machine sharpening. You need to hone them properly. So today, I thought uh, we'd take the opportunity to talk about the Tormac system of sharpening where we've always used this grindstone, the SG250, which always comes with it. Mm -hmm. But just recently, we got a Japanese stone here. Okay, where this, it goes from 220 to 1000, depends on your stone grader, remember? And mm -hmm. we did a video on that. Where this starts out at 4000, and it is 4000. Oh, wow. You never take this side of the stone grader to it, okay? Usually don't take any, any of the grader to it, but sometimes I get a lot of um, uh, a magic mac on there. So I'll just take this. You only use this side of the stone grater on here okay. if you need it. So I'm gonna turn it on. I want you to feel this. Feel how fine that is. Your wow. chisel, and Chris, come in here and see this. We lap the back. I lap to a nice polish, right? Okay, mm -hmm. which I always do. But let, you'll see there's some striation patterns in there. Okay, I'm gonna take this to a mirror polish and get these up and running for you. Sounds good. I wouldn't take them to this at a thousand, I would take them right to the Japanese stone. So what I'm gonna do is I just pick these up. Those are oh, wow. uh, chisel gauges. So I know what that is, but I'd like to have you check each one. Okay. Okay, because we need to set our <clears throat> tool post to the right bevel. I'm gonna say 25. Okay, perfect. Yep. It is. Okay, so let's set it. Okay. So when we're setting up the chisel holder or the tool holder, um, it's called an SC77. We went really in depth on this T8 mm -hmm. in an earlier uh, video. You can see a few things that we went over, but there's a few things I always check right in here that this part of the chisels up against there and up against there. Okay, I know it's tight here. This is this knob is all the way in because it can slide up, so it's well supported. Okay. The other thing we always do is I just take a, a small square and I bring it right in that way there. I know when I get this set up on here, it will be 90 degrees. Okay, so let's talk about setting up the stone. Okay. We'll worry about the angle in a few minutes. This, and Chris, come over here so we can see this. You'll see it, SJ250. Uh, this is the SG250. This is my original stone that I have on here. And we've used it quite a bit. And I'll show you a, the comparison in a minute. Okay. Because when we were setting the bevel on here with this one, <clears throat> we would set this with this point right here at a little less, about 240, because it's we've used it, we've worn it. Right. This is very long wearing, and it's gonna start out at 250, so we gotta make sure, we have to reset this gauge, okay? And this one right here, that pointer, is exactly at 25. Perfect. So Chris, come in here so you can see this. This is what I was talking about. This is the 250 Japanese stone, and here's the original. These do wear down, uh, so when you're setting up your bevel gauge, make sure you set it to your wheel size. And we've done videos on how to measure these properly. So setting up the initial setup on the stone, I make sure my tool rest is the two knobs that lock it in are resting. And I'm gonna bring, see this right here? 
see this angle? Hopefully you get that, Chris, with a little bit of light. I could take it and maneuver it right in to have it absolutely, I set that on here on the wheel and I just dial this right in to get it. Oh, wow. See how cool that is? And then I lock it in, remember? Remember the process. Press here and then here. That was what works for me, so I know it's locked in. So what we're gonna do is, I always do this just to verify, okay, is I mark the bevel. Okay, let it dry for a couple seconds. And that is why, and it doesn't hurt the stone, that is why you'll see some marks in here because sharpening already with this uh, yesterday, um, it discolors this because of the magic marker, but it doesn't matter. Okay. It doesn't uh, ruin its effectiveness. Sounds good. So you can do this one of two ways. You can do it by hand like this and just rotate it away. Okay, you see how it's picking up the marker? Mm -hmm. Take it away and look. Wow, that's right up on that edge. Okay, I don't want to do a secondary bevel, so I'm going to adjust the tool rest to get more of that. So we're up on the point of that bevel, so we have to lower our tool rest. Chris, swing around so you can see this. I'm going to take it, and I'm going to loosen this knob and this knob, and you remember that little diagram we had? Okay, I need to lower the post, because I can't remember lefty-loosey, righty-tighty, and I need to go down, so I'm going to go this way with it. Just a couple of clicks. Remember, lock this post first, and this one, and let's test it. Remember what it looked like prior, and now we're getting all that black on there. Oh, wow. So let's see where we're at. And let's look at the bevel. So there you go. I'm not going to worry about that. But you can actually start to see it shine a little. See that? Mm -hmm. And hopefully the camera gets that. Just that little bit. So now let's uh, take it up. Just by looking at that bevel, we know we're going to go straight across. We know we're set at 90. So when you take this, now, now this stone is rotating toward us, but we are locked and loaded. We have our knob here. We can't fall off the stone because we have the secondary knob back here. Chris, can you get this? And when you set this, you set it so it's right at the edge of the stone so you can use the whole stone back and forth. And it's not a lot. I like to just to take my thumb like this and bring it right down. And a little's a lot like this. It feels like silk when you're shopping in this. Okay, so we're gonna take it off and I'm gonna let you do this. Like you feel zero resistance almost, it's so fine. Okay, we are almost there, Big D. This chisel, I could tell you, was probably a little out of square where we got most of the bevel, except for here and here. Okay. It's gonna have a little bit of a hollow ground, which was okay, but we'll just, it's effortless, isn't it? It's wicked smooth. Okay, and we're gonna have this in a nice mirror polish in just a couple more minutes. Sounds good. So Big D, check it out. <laughs> it's hands free. <clears throat> But there's a situation, if you do this, I've seen all kinds of wacky videos where somebody has pressure on it and it's being held and pressure with a weight. Yeah, you could do it like this, but what's gonna happen is you're gonna, what? Have wear right in the stone. That's why you move it back and forth. And it is, it is smooth as silk. This is such a fine stone. So we didn't have to re-grind your bevel. We just had to hone it and bring it right into our spec, right? not the out-of-the-box spec. So we've only been on this stone just a minute, and we're almost finished. But I want to analyze this, and you can see how this chisel was out from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Because you can see how solid we are here, but see how, Chris, can you see that? See mm -hmm. how dull it is, right? See how it's really isn't dull but it's factory shop in the middle we're gonna have this mirror finish and wicked shop by the time we're finished but once again out of this box you might have had a little disappointment so you always shop in everything or hone it sounds good so how does that look big D much better much better you get that mirror polish on there now there's sometimes you don't need to do um, the uh, honing here but I'm just gonna take it on the back because I feel a very, very light wire burr. Okay. So let's test <laughs> this 16 millimeter chisel. 
Oh yeah. So what we'll do is we'll give this a quick test and my ultimate test, not just the paper cut, is taking on some end grain and I got some poplar here and let's just see that. Oh yeah, that's nice. That just slices through this end grain. Beautiful, just beautiful. So there we go, awesome. So big date. Yep. There's your set of chisels, ready to rock and roll. And as we always say, be positive. Stay shy.